of Hallas. Okay. This is tape two with Rabbi okay. Abba Braunschmiegel, and it's November 26, 1998. Yeah. Do you remember any of the people involved with the uprising? Well, the main person I remember is his name was Label. He was a giant. He was or he was what they call today like a a good basketball player, tall, uh, over six feet, very strong. All the ten of them were very strong, strong people, and also they they, they didn't they minded that they are prisoners, like they realize what's happening to them, and they uh, he was. Uh, he used to pick me up, he used to play with me, he used to pick me up in his hand like a ball and play with me. And he always, he was very nice to me. Uh, and they worked very hard apparently. And they managed slowly to, again this information I, came out afterwards. Uh, in the place where they worked, they were able to overpower the Germans. They prepared for this. And they had apparently made contact with the Polish, uh, the, the Partizana, or whoever they were. They, they had some outside, I'm not, I'm not going to answer, it's the other phone. I, I'm, I, uh, wait, I could disconnect it. Should I disconnect it? Okay. Now, uh, they, uh, and they made a little uprising and they escaped. And after they escaped, they made a lot of sabotage. They blew up trains and they, uh, of the Germans. They also they, they attacked the German military a lot. And the military went after them into the woods. They could never locate them. But eventually, they were killed by the Poles. The Poles at times were worse than the Germans. And now, uh, uh, my parents told me that what really happened was that the, these ten, for some reason, began taking on the Polish uh, uh, army, uh, the AK, the Armia Krajowa, was called the Red Army. It was a Polish nationalistic uh, part, uh, 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 army. And they began attacking them. So eventually the Poles surrounded them in the woods they, and they headed out. It was a, it was a vicious fight, they, they say and they were all killed. Do you remember anyone else being punished in the camp? Well, uh, my father was, was given, uh, what, 30 lashes once. What I remember do? only that he came home beaten and was, he was blue and I don't know what, the black, but he couldn't move and he was ter in terrible pain. And he told us that he was given 30 lashes. And I think it may have been during that, uh, that uh, uprising I don't remember when, but I do remember that he came. And I, I did not see the 30 lashes, but I do remember him coming back to the barracks and he was beaten. And they, he told us that they beat him, they gave him, like Malchus. Do you think he was part of this uprising? I don't think so, no. My father was a very responsible person. Because in fact, uh, all these people who made uprisings, they caused a lot of trouble for the rest of us. And my father was very careful. I don't, I, I, I don't really know. My father was very active in trying to help. I don't, I don't know exactly what he did. It's true that he may have known about it because whatever was going on, my father was a very smart person. He was very wise. And people sought his advice. So most likely he knew about it. He may, he may have been part of it. My brother would know if he's part of it or not. Do you remember what clothing you wore? No, I don't remember. My uncle, I don't. I don't remember. Except I told you, my my mother had boots made for me. She we had some money yet in the camp. She made. I got new boots, and everyone was very jealous of this. I remember distinctly. The other children, they thought like they 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 told me like they were teasing me in in a, in a bad way, like I must be in with the Germans to have. Uh, well, my mother was in with the Germans because I have new boots, and that, that was a, like, a, like, a, like a, this, you, you are getting stakes in the middle of the woods someplace. Uh, okay, it must, must be my wife. Uh, this you, I, yeah, go ahead. Do you remember your mother ever lighting candles when you were in the camp? I cannot, I cannot tell you for sure that I remember in camp. I do remember distinctly as a young child my mother lighting candles, and she would cover her eyes and cry, and she would say, God von Abraham, Yitzhak von Yankiv. Most likely, it, it, it must have started. In the, in, in, in the first camp, they were, we were allowed to have candles. Do you remember leaving this camp? 
leaving the yeah, eventually I do remember yes I remember leaving the camp uh, just a second uh, what do I remember about leaving the camp I don't remember oh yeah I do remember oh now I remember in the camp first of all what else I remember in the camp is this we had the Jewish commandant his name was uh, Vanguard or Vanguard uh, he was a German Jew from Vienna actually and he was actually in my opinion a very good person he tried to help the to, as, as much as you could help. Because there was a Yiddish, like a Yiddish police in the camp. He was the head of it. He was the main person between us and the Germans. But for some reason, some Yidin uh, uh, did not like him. They, they, held, they held him to be a collaborator. My parents told me that's absolutely not true. He was a decent person. There were certain things he, that, was, that he just, uh, whatever happened, he couldn't uh, stop. Uh, anyway, most of, anyway, most of the camp had a very good opinion of him. Uh, so he was, uh, just a second. Oh, yeah, I do remember this from the camp. People used to ask me, Abala, when that will fight when? When, will, when will, will we be free? And I always used to answer on Monday. I used to run around, and uh, we, by the way, we were liberated on Monday. Monday morning was our uh, main liberation. Uh, that is eventually. Uh, now, uh, at one time, I remember that the commandant had a dog. That's what the picture that I showed you, I think, has a, has a, a dog on it. Uh, anyway, I used to run after this dog, and one day, I remember, uh, I, I grabbed the dog by its tail and pulled it, and, of course, the dog bit me. What was the dog's name? I don't remember. Did you ever have to wear a star on the camp? An armband? You know, I did. I, I, I did. I do remember. I don't remember if I wore a star. I don't. I don't remember that. Do you remember any adults wearing them? Yeah, I think so. I know. Did I? Do I do? I cannot be sure. Actually, I can. I know. I cannot be sure. I do remember stars, but I cannot be sure if I. See, I don't remember like the, the, the order of things. I just. I do remember seeing stars on the on the arm over here. Yes, I do remember that. Most likely, it must have been in the camp. It couldn't have been any other place. After the war, they didn't wear yellow stars. Was there any religious leadership in the camp? Do you remember? Religious, I would not. I told you, the only real religious experience that I know of was when they davened and the baking of the matzahs. The baking of the matzahs, my mother did it, and this uh, Leibisch uh, Beigelman was his name. Leib Leibisch Beigelman was his name. He was like the Rav. He was a, he was a, a Rav, actually. He was a big, he was a Baltrilla. Uh, he was a very good Baltrilla. He supervised and he helped in the actual baking too. Otherwise, I don't remember anything specific religious. I mean, I, I swear, look, I didn't know that what the, I didn't know what religious means. I, I was, too, but I do remember the matzah, the davening. And I, I, I think my, I may have known Shema Yisrael. Also, I do remember that at one point the SS came. How, I didn't know SS. We knew there was. I knew right away something happened, because we had we had, we were quite free for a while. We, I was able to play, and one day my mother or my father told me, I cannot, I shouldn't go outside. I have to stay inside. And I do remember seeing different Germans dressed in more military garb and uh, with weapons. It was obvious that they were different than the former Germans. And my, we were, and my parents told me that we are being evacuated to a different camp. And... Uh, Did you question them? I don't remember if I... Well, I no, I doubt it. Well, I, to me, this was life. I didn't know, I didn't know any other life, and uh, I didn't question anything. Uh, and the, right away, my mother told us that, that, that it's not good, uh, that this, these Germans are mean, and they are Rotschim, and... Uh, I have, I have to, uh, I always, uh, I should try to be near them all the time. And uh, I, I forgot, I, did, I don't know any, I don't remember exactly what they told me, but I realized something is happening. And then we were taken, I forgot even how, I think by train, but they had trains. And we were taken to a different camp, which was called Chainstorov. And in Chainstorov, there were four camps. We were in the camp called the Valter. Again, all these names I found out afterwards, but... And then Chainstochov was also an Arbeitslager, but was completely under the SS. 
Uh, oh yes, Samantha, I think I remember the following. When the SS came into uh, into Demlin, and they saw the conditions under which we live, they said, again, this my my parents told me this. They said, "Sie haben doch ein Paradies hier. This is paradise for you." Because it was indeed, uh, from what I found out afterwards, one of the few camps on the Germans that we were treated they were a little bit uh, like mentioned. Even though we were hungry, there was not enough food, and uh, we were we we couldn't go out. We and uh, but. Uh, I do remember that the Poles used to come every day and do some sort of exchange between us and them, and they used to make fun of us, like uh, like when you like you come to the zoo, and you watch the monkeys. They used to like like look, you are you are in the and, and you cannot do this. They used to grab away things and run away. How did you react to that? I don't. Yeah, I don't remember. I I I, I don't know. I, I I don't remember this. Anyway, we were taken to Chenstochov. Now, in Chenstochov, uh, first of all, we were right. Uh, my brothers were separated from me. Oh, let, let's go slowly. Wait. What happened was, immediately upon arrival, they took all of us. I forgot how many children there were. And we were placed against the wall, and Germans with with guns, with the uh, with uh, not what not uh, but, uh, with the. Uh, yeah, guns uh, uh, were aiming at us, and suddenly they they dropped their weapons, and we were taken into a, into the camp itself. Before entering the camp, they were about to shoot us. And uh, my mother told me afterwards that what happened was when the pair, when they even realized what's happening that this camp many. This was a pure arbeit camp. If you couldn't work, you, did, you didn't belong. They didn't need you. So uh, uh, they, they, when they realized that they were going to shoot all the children, they, had, they still had some money, either diamonds or something else, and they were able to bribe the commandant. Wait, what was his name? I shouldn't know his name even. Bartenschlager, I think, was his name. He was a vicious man. You just you you looked at him and you got scared, but apparently I don't know how the, I don't know how what happened. He, no children were allowed in the camp, so he gave the order to say for, for whatever whatever he received for it, and we so we were told like this, in Enstrahov first of all the barracks were not were triple decker so maybe even what, what's above triple I don't know. Uh, very, very tall. Uh, anyway, one top of the other one. So we were told like this, that we cannot be seen outside. We have to stay inside. And every once in a while, we will be told in advance that we have to go into hiding. And hiding meant climbing to the highest, uh, to the highest bed, uh, to the highest bunk bed, and go under the blanket thing. There were blankets in the in, in the barracks. It was very, also it was very big barracks. There was no privacy. In the Mlin, I remember that the, each like I was with my parents were in like a little cubicle, with with double deckers. But here there was one gigantic barrack of uh, went by rows, and they also they used to take they make an appel in the morning to see everyone. Except we we did not go to the appel. So officially we did not exist. And we, the food that our parents got was supposed. We were supposed to. Sh they were supposed to share it with us. He, we were not given special because we officially did not exist. What food was there? Uh, mainly, I remember soup. That's all I remember. Soup. I, I, I think there were also there was also bread, but mainly the soup. That's all we. That's all we survived on, and uh, and yeah, come to think of it now, I remember once. I didn't know what Hanukkah is, but it's now. I do remember them lighting candles. They I remember lighting candles. Some people lit candles for Hanukkah. What did I they did use? Candles. I don't know how they got it. They do. I, I I shouldn't say. I remember them lighting something, and I it, I did I did not know it was Hanukkah, but I afterwards they, they maybe I think he. I, I don't, no, let's, just just a second, and uh, just a second. What was I saying? Uh, so. 
What happened was this. That's what, the, what my parents told me afterwards. The reason why we had to hide was that since officially we did not exist, so the, S, the, main, the other SS people who were above him did not know that we exist. They used to come to the camp for an inspection every once in a while. And he would, give the, he would tell our parents in advance. And we were, we, we were given a signal. We had to do it very quick to hide. And it was a, we knew it by heart, like the, the whole routine, How would to you climb hide? up quickly. How would you do it? What would you do? We quickly climbed up, and all the children like to climb anyway. And it was a little like, and we quickly disappeared. We went up, because they did not climb on top. They, they used to look, but they, they did not look all the way on top. And especially, we were under, we were not, we were under, under the blanket completely. So they didn't see us. He was afraid he could have been caught. He took a chance, but he, I, anyway, he was a mean person. He, oh, he, was, he, 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 he really enslaved people. Who was that? The Spartan Schlager, the head of the camp. There was also a Jewish commandant there, but I forgot his I don't remember his name. I don't even remember what duties he had. Uh, it was the Jewish police. They had, they had certain duties. And uh, in this camp, it was, it was, this camp uh, was a shorter period than the first camp, but it was, uh, it was a very bad experience. There, not only hunger was felt, but fear. I knew that I could die any minute. Uh, I, this was, uh, my parents, uh, like, uh, uh, they, they told me that they may not see me to, uh, the next hour, and so on, the next day. I Did they give you the, any advice or warnings? I don't remember that. I don't know, but they must have, but I, I don't remember what. But what I, all I remember is in the first camp, I was also afraid at times. But since we were, we were treated more or less decent, it wasn't so bad. But here, fear was uh, was was uh, every minute experience. Remember the sounds of the camp. The sound? What do you mean the sound? The, the sounds of voices at night, or or any activity no. that was unusual. I don't remember that. No, I don't remember. How did you? I keep remember warm? being cold. How did you keep warm? I don't know. I I, I don't remember. How I used to be under the blanket. How did you keep it was only one there? blanket there. What? Was there running water there? Oh, you know, I don't remember this with toilets and this. They were outside. They were outside. They were not inside. Like outhouses. I don't remember now all these things about washing in the morning. You know, it's funny. I don't remember that. My mother, I, by the way, I always remained with my mother. My mother took care of me. Oh yeah, in Chestakov, the men and the women were separated. Men barracks outside. I did not see my father too often. We did go outside. We used to play outside even in Chestakov. We knew when, uh, and we knew when to disappear. Did your mother ever explain to you what was happening? Did you question her? I don't remember if I questioned her, but after a while I knew what was happening. I knew that the Germans are bad, and they could kill us. And we are at their mercy. That that I knew, and uh, I understood. We all, all of us, uh, all the children understood that we have to listen very carefully to the instructions given by our parents, and everyone followed them. Because we knew our life depends on it. When did you leave this camp? Chestakov, we were liberated by the Russian army in, in, the, in January 1945. How long had you lived there altogether? In the last camp, I think I was only there six months. I'm not sure. I think it, it, we arrived there in 1944 sometimes, and we were liberated in 45, January 1945. In the camps, did you ever need medical treatment? You know, actually, come to think of it, in the first camp, there was a doctor, a Jewish doctor was in the camp. I, uh, I even know, I should know his name even. Uh, Kinslinger? I'm not sure. Uh, there was more than one doctor. Yeah, I do remember uh, medical treatment, yes. Well, I forgot to tell you the important thing that happened in Demlin. In Demlin, a cousin of, uh, of mine was born. The mother was pregnant, apparently, from before. Now, uh, my mother told me the following. I remember the birth. 
because I was always with my mother. But my mother told me what happened was this. She, uh, the mother of the child, who was a cousin to my mother. What was his name? Tenenbaum. He's, he lives now in Paris. Uh, and the mother and the, her friends decided that upon birth they'll kill the child. Because there was no way, they thought there was no way that a child, uh, how can a child survive in a concentration camp? Now, my mother didn't say anything, but she made up her mind that she's going to do her best to save the child. Now, my mother volunteered to be the, uh, the midwife at delivery. Because my mother knew how, she knew how to do it. So, of course, they were very happy. My mother, my mother was a very kind woman. She grabbed the child right away after she cut off the placenta, I guess. She grabbed it and she told everyone, I am taking care of this child. I'm not going to let you kill the child. I, it's my I, I, whatever happens will be my responsibility. Not you have nothing to do with it. And she had to fight to keep. The, they wanted to grab away the child from her. And the, anyway, I don't know how it worked. The mice, she saved the child. She raised it. The child, and as I said, he's he's alive. He lives in Paris. And what's his first name? Oh, I, I think Yankala. Yeah, I'm almost sure it's Yanko. I did meet him. I met him in Paris after the war. Not when I, in my first marriage, it so happens my father, Rav Munk, uh, had a stroke. Now he, by he, his, he is uh, uh, what do you call it? A physical therapist by profession, and he became the therapist for my father-in-law. And the, I did. I met I, he, him, his mother. They survived. How did you feel when you saw this baby born? I don't remember. I, I, don't, I don't know how I felt. Uh, a young, new baby. Yeah, a baby was nice, a baby, I don't know. I, I don't remember anything about the baby since he was born, after he was born. I just remember he was there. Do you remember any, any recollection, anything else that comes to mind about any of these camps before liberation? Well, uh, yeah, but, uh, well, now, in Chenstachov, one day, it was in the winter, we were taken for a march. We were told that they are transferring us to a different camp in that area. Also, must have been changed to hope. And all I remember is I still had those boots, but they were not comfortable, those boots. They were, they were terrible. They were, my mother did it. She, she somehow used all her money to get someone to do it. But I could not walk with them. And I, but I walked with them. It was a very painful experience. During the, during the march, some people didn't make it back, and uh, I don't really know how long it lasted. I, I don't know how... Uh, we came to some other place for a short while, I don't remember how long, and eventually they shipped us back to... We had to go back to our original camp. And uh, just a second. Oh, now, in this camp... Now, this I do not know myself. This I was told afterwards. I was told that in the camp in Shenstachov, for Simchas Teira, the Yidin had a coffers. And what happened was that one of the Yidin, I don't know the name, he, he, he was a carpenter, I think. But he was a very good carpenter, some other, some other craftsman. And he used to work out, he had a permit to go. In Shenstachov, it was very difficult to leave. Uh, you had to, they were very strict. And to, when the, you entered, they searched you very strict. So anyway, he he knew that uh, he knew where there was a Sifre Torah hidden. He knew the town. Maybe he was from the town, and he smuggled in a Sifre Torah into camp. How did he do it? He he went to a shul to a place where he found a very small Sifre Torah. He took off, he took off the Atzechayim and wrapped it around under his shirt, the Sifre Torah around his body. And he took a chance that they wouldn't search him that day. If they had searched him, they would have shot him on the spot. And he brought back a safer tailor. And apparently in some corner of the camp, they, they danced and sang uh, on Simchas Did you ever see that safer tailor? No, no, I did not. I did not see this whole thing. I, this I know from people in the camp. Eventually, I read it even. I read it in a, 
It was written up with all the details, but I, I don't know. I just know the basic story. Now, in Sheinstachov itself, there was no, uh, nothing done together, like in Demblin. Because they, they were separated. I, my brothers were not, I, 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 oh yeah, I do remember this. I remember distinctly my brother Yosl, who was a little bit older than I am. I remember him falling to the ground on his knees and begging, the, when we came to the camp, begging the, whoever, the German officer, that he wants to be his, uh, to polish his shoes. What is that called? Uh, uh, he begged him because he knew he, his life, he could save him something like this. And for a while he did, he, he did. the German accepted him. And he was like a little servant to, to this German. He shined his shoes or did other services for him. Uh, just a second. Valet. What? Like a valet. A valet, yeah. That basically, the, I don't know exactly what he did. And uh, my other brother also was a valet for a German officer. My old, the one that is still at the Saal was also a valet for a German officer. And uh, were there any benefits for them? What do, were there any benefits for them doing this? Most likely, first of all, they were more secure. I don't know what benefits they got, except yeah, most likely they must, they must have given them some food that we that they, the rest of the camp didn't get. What did you get there? I told you, the, the only thing I remember is bread and s this watery soup. The soup I remember most of all. Uh, and uh, j just a second. Again, as I said, in that camp, I do not remember anything done as a whole. Whatever people did, they did on their own, individually. And... Uh, I do remember they were very strict about the, the making sure everyone is in the camp, no one escapes. They took this appell and... Uh, were there any escapes that you're aware of? In Chainstachov, no, I don't remember any escapes. In, in Demblin, yes, in Chainstachov, not. In Demblin, by the way, individuals did escape. But, you know, it's funny, when in Demblin, when they changed it from a ghetto to a camp, so they like they gave a decree uh, that everyone has to go to the camp. Whoever didn't come couldn't and then wanted to come in, they wouldn't let. And many, many, as a matter of fact, an uncle of mine was not allowed to he did not come along. And they did not let him in and he was killed by the Pollocks. That's why he realized afterwards that it's not good to be outside. He had no place to be. Okay.